Okay, our number 14 study of the Bible. <clears throat> you find these on YouTube and SoundCloud and my Facebook pages. Miles Coverdale, English ecclesiastical reformer, chiefly known as a Bible translator, preacher, briefly a bishop of Exeter. In 1534, Canterbury or Canterbury partitioned Henry the Eighth that a whole Bible might be translated into English. Consequently, in 1535, Covendale dedicated his complete Bible to the king, King Henry the Eighth. You know, we hear much about King James and the King James 1611 Bible. I haven't heard much about King Henry. The printing was financed by Jacobus, J-A-C-O-B-U-S, Von Mitterin, M-E-T-E-R-E-N. The printing of the first edition was finished on the 4th of October, 1535. Coverdale based the text in part on Tyndale's, where we did study on him, translation of the New Testament. Following Tyndale's November 1534 Antwerp edition. And of those books which were translated by Tyndale, the Pentateuch, and the Book of Jonah, other Old Testament books he translated from the German of Luther and others. So we've got Martin Luther. In 1537, the Matthew Bible was printed also. Also in Antwerp, A-N-T-W-E-R-P, at the expense of Richard Grafton, G-R-A-F-T-O-N, and and Edward Whitechurch, W-I-T-C-H-U-R-C-H, -H, who, who issued it in London. It comprised of Tyndale's Pentateuch, a version of Joshua II, and Chronicles translated from the Hebrew, probably by Tyndale, and not previously published. A remainder of the Old Testament from Covendale, Tyndale's New Testament from 1535, it's dedicated to, King, to Henry VIII, who licensed it for general reading. The Thomas Matthew, the supposed editor, was alias for John Rogers. Commondale's legacy has been far-reaching, especially that of his first complete English Bible of the 1535. For the 400th anniversary of the authorized King James Bible in 2011, the Church of England issued a resolution, which was endorsed by the General Snod, starting with the Covendale Bible. The text included brief description of the continuing significance of the authorized King James 1611 and its immediate. The Coverdale Bible, 1535, a revision of Tyndale. The Matthew Bible, 1537. He was partially responsible, this would be Covendale, for Matthew's Bible. It completed Tyndale's version. It finished Coverdale's and Tyndale's work Bible, the complete English Bible. John Rogers was a friend and assistant of William Tyndale. Before Tyndale was put to death, he gave Rogers all handwritten manuscripts. He worked under the name of Thomas Matthews. Why? Well, Tyndale was put to put was burned, was put to death for the Bible. <laughs> you know, Bible was not too popular, especially by a church. Alias against the persecutions such as happened to Tyndale, the first martyr under Bloody Mary. There's a good reason. The Old Testament combination of Tyndale and Coverdale. The New Testament Tyndale's third unpublished edition. The Wife Beater's Bible, Matthew Bible, 1537. A footnote to 1 Peter 3, 7, footnote, is rendered. And if she be not obedient and helpful to, unto him, and dowereth to beat the fear of God into her head, that thereby she may be compelled to learn her duty and do it. So Matthew's Bible is called the White Beater's Bible. 
The Great Bible, 1539. The Great Bible was prepared by Miles Coverdale. The Old Testament, Matthew's Bible, compared to Latin Vulgate, Erasmus. 1539, year, three years after a dying prayer. Remember that dying prayer? Go back and check it out. Somebody said to the king, "Open." The, somebody said to the Lord, Lord, open the eyes. I'll have you go back or study. The Great Bible, great because of its large size. It is known by several other names as well. The Conwell Bible, such Thomas Conwell directed its partition. It was 16 and a half by 11 inches. It's the first English Bible, the order of the books of the Bible, in our present day Bible book order. So when you open up your Bible today, the book, the Bible books order are found in the Great Bible, 1539. It's the second revision of Tyndale's Bible. The Geneva Bible, 1557, the New Testament, 1560, the whole Bible, Old and New Testament. This is the Geneva Bible. All under the, the realm and the work of Coverdale. It's the first English Bible translated entire of Hebrew and Greek languages with no Latin. It's during the reign of Queen Bloody Mary. During the reign of Queen Mary I of England, 1553 to 1558, a number of Protestant scholars fled to England to Geneva, Switzerland. Switzerland's, it's a Swiss city of Geneva, was a city of refuge because of Queen Mary. It was with Miles Coverdale, Theodore Beza, B E Z A, John Knox, William Whittenham, who supervised the translation. He's the brother in law to John Calvin. The New Testament, Revision of Tyndale. The books from Ezra to Malachi were translated from Hebrew into English, Masoretic Hebrew. It's the first to use verse divisions of the English Bible. Each book was divided into chapters by Stephen Langton, L-A-N-G-T-O-N, an Archbishop of Canterbury, in around 1227 A.D. But now we got chapter divisions. The first person to divide the New Testament chapters into verses was Italian De De Dominica Bible scholar Santis Pagnino, S A N T E S P A G N I N O, 1470 to 1541. But his system was never widely adopted. His verse division in the New Testament were far longer than those known today. <laughs> so. Try to get it out. Try to get it worked out. The first English New Testament to use the verse divisions were, was in 1557, a translation by William Whittingham, 1524 to 1579. The first Bible in English to use both chapter and verses was the Geneva Bible, published shortly after 1560. So the Geneva Bible can say, open your, your Bibles to chapter such and verse such. Chapter 8, verse 7 was the Geneva Bible. These verse divisions soon gained acceptance by the standard way to note it, noted verses and have since been used nearly in all English Bibles and the vast majority of those in other languages. So great help for us to find where we're reading and studying and memorization of Scripture. Coverdale's Bible chapter summaries and headings. A little extra. First to use italicized words in the translation. The first English Bible to remove, this is the Geneva Bible, the first English Bible to remove the apocrypha. Get out of here. Plain, readable type and simple size. Roman type text, not Gothic. Many Calvinistic notations and anti-Catholic footnotes. I, I use the Geneva Bible on my, on my computer. I love their footnotes. And they attack the Catholic Church. It's the Bible of the people. The Puritans loved it and nonconformists. It was against church and state, admired by the Geneva Bible. It came across on the Mayflower. 
1620, nine years after the King James Bible, yet the Bible that came to the New World by the ones with the, with the silly black hats was the Geneva Bible. The Geneva Bible is called the, the Martyrs Bible, the Blood Bible, because of the Queen of Mary who's killing. The Mayflower came over with the pilgrims because there's persecution. It's quoted by Shakespeare. One interesting variation of the Geneva Bible is the so-called Breaches Bible. The first of which appeared in 1579. In the Breaches Bible, Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 reads. And I'm going to try to do this the best I could. It's old English. Then the ears, E-I-E-S, of them would be eyes, of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sold fig, F-I-G-G-E, tree leaves together, and made themselves breeches. In the King James Version of 1611, breeches was changed to aprons. Geneva Bibles with the breeches passes continue to be printed well into the time the King James Bible of 1611. Genesis 3-7. And the eyes of, of both of them were open. They knew not they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. In 1643, Soldier's Pocket Bible was published. England used by Cromwell's troops. troops. Sections of the Geneva Bible. 50,000 reprinted in America given the Union soldiers of a civil war. So there were 16, I mean, 1643 soldiers' pocket Bible. England publishes this. It was used by Cromwell's troops. It contained the sections of the Geneva Bible, and then there were 50,000 more reprinted, and in America, it was given to Union soldiers during our civil war. The Bishop's Bible, 1568. English translation of the Bible, which was produced under the authority of the established Church of England in 1568. Popularity of the Geneva Bible was much concern of the clergy. Remember, it had footnotes, and the footnotes went against church and state. The Church of England is church and state. We don't like the Geneva Bible. It has footnotes and teaches against us. Let's come up with our own Bible. Losing their authority over the people, the Pope's option was to forbid and ban the Bible. And this was the same charge in Jesus in his time. He's gathering much of the people. If we let him know, the whole world will turn to him. Well, amen. Matthew Parker, Archbishop of Canterbury, Initiated the project to create a new Bible version in 1563. Revisers were instructed to use the Great Bible as the basis and depart from it only where it did not accurately represent the original. <laughs> but they want to use the Geneva Bible because, you know, that was. So as a rule, unless the Hebrew or Greek original required a change, the reading of the Great Bible was retained. Marginal notes for the Geneva Bible? <laughs> well, those were that were offensive to the Church of England, and they were discarded. So whatever, I mean, all right, follow the Great Bible, but any of the notes of the Geneva Bible that, that offended us, remove it. You would think also any passage of scriptures that offended the Church would also probably be removed, too. That's why you got passages in the modern Bibles are removed, because it offended somebody. Parker revealed the work in the initial work, made his own corrections and changes. There you go. Somebody got offensive. And compiled the whole thing into a complete Bible. When it was published in 1568, it was called the Bishop's Bible, Bible because it was the work of so many bishops of the Church of State, Church of England, and they wrote it because that, that Bible over there offends us. That Bible over there is not good to the Church. 
That's the same gas that the modern Bibles. It offends us. Change it. A body of men of system and checks and rechecks ensured in the work of translation. After already Parker made his own print, remove what is offensive to us. And yeah, I got some property in Florida. He authorized King James Bible in 1611. We'll, we'll get to that later. We owe Coverdale's work. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It's called the trespasses version of Tyndale. Tender mercies and the valley of shadow of death. Coverdale's Bible is sometimes known as the Bugs Bible. Now see, there were changes. And in the Bugs Bible, because of the verse of Psalms 91.15, Thou shalt not need, N-E-D-E, -E, to be afraid of any bugs, B-U-G-G-S, by the night. Now Psalms 91.15, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. The Taverns Bible, more correctly called the most sacred Bible, which is the Holy Scripture, containing the Old and New Testament, translated to English, and newly recognized with great diligence after the most faithful examples by Richard Taverner, is a minor revision of Matthew's Bible, edited by Richard Tavern, and published in 1539. First editions of Tavern's Bible are extremely rare. It overshadowed by the publication of the Great Bible. So we're going to stop right there. That's much of Miles Carbondale. And that's the line of our King James Bible. But the churches today, they're, they're, they're involved in foolishness teaching and teaching that has no value at all. And forget church history, forget Bible history. That's a shame.